Hi, Andy here. We were with a customer last week and they were asking about New Vector Federation. Hadn't seen a whole lot online and figured we would kind of do something a little different here, but kind of the same. Uh, shout out to Sess Bikes Hacks for that. What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of play a little bit with Federation. Uh, I've got a couple clusters here. Uh, I'm using Rancher Carbide, uh, Rancher Government Carbide, which is nice. Uh, we get some different branding and some other nice value add on top. You can see I have three clusters. I have local, I have a digital ocean one, and I have an AWS uh, downstreams. Let's start with the local cluster. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try and play with the app catalog. We're gonna go to applications and we're gonna go to new vector. What's kind of interesting about the federation is you actually, it creates a service and a separate ingress for it. And you kind of have to be cognizant of that, especially with downstream clusters because they have to use the public IP, not the um, cluster IP. And I'll kind of highlight that out. What we like to do is we're gonna use the YAML just because I think it's a little easier to understand kind of going through all the different options. Um, we're so far in the controller section. We got pod affinity, we've got federation. Now what's interesting about the federation is there's two types of services. One is managed and one is master. Uh, because it's the first node, we're gonna go under master. And we're gonna set we're gonna set ingress enabled to true because we're trying to reach outside the cluster. We're gonna give it a host name, call it nvapi.rfed.io. We're gonna give it, we're not gonna give it a secret. We're gonna say TLS all the thing. We're gonna leave it set to false. Think about this. No, we're gonna set it to true. Let's try true. Okay. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do just to kind of validate is I'm going to give it some certs and give it a cert name. We're going to call this TLS ingress. And I have in my code here, uh, let me do this, bring it down in. So I'm just going to create the namespace, give it privileged, and then create the secret for the for my wildcard certs ahead of time. So I'm going to go to the command line. This is the same cluster. I'm going to create the namespace and give it the secret. All right. So we've got TLS ingress. Um, then we're going to leave the image alone. We're going to leave everything else alone for that. Under ingress itself, we're going to go ahead and enable it, set it to true. I learned a spell. I'm going to call it newvector.rfed.io. And I'm going to use the same TLS. It's a, actually a wildcard, so which is nice. Ingress, set it to true. Uh, I'm going to leave those alone. Rancher SSO, I'm going to set to false only because I'm just playing with this. Um, otherwise, I'd have to go through the Rancher proxy and use the Rancher self sign on to kind of validate these things. But I kind of want to keep it a little separate. Okay. We're under the CVE section. There's nothing in here. Docker, Enforcer, Global, I don't need to worry about. K3S, I do need to turn to true. And then the last thing that I like to do is just to kind of button things up is under the manager, uh, oh, manager ingress, we forgot to give it that. Wait, hold on, did I put in the wrong? I think I did the wrong ingress. Ingress for controller. No, we don't need ingress for controller. So let me do this, let me do this first day. You'll love that. So let me set that to null. And you null. I'm just kind of reversing this out. I believe that was double quotes. And set TLS to false. And then what we're going to do is go down here to manager. That's the one we need to set ingress on. Good catch. True host name. Neu vector secret name TLS ingress and set TLS to true. And then the last thing I do under service is change it from node port to cluster IP. Um, I do like to have um, things not opening ports up on my cluster unless absolutely necessary. Let's go ahead and hit install on this. And this is going to create the CRDs and then go ahead and kick off the helm install. It's installing now. So we can do QCTO get pod n cattle noi vector. And we can see it's up and running. I've always been, I've been playing with this a little bit earlier, so it doesn't have to pull images or any of that fun stuff. We can wait for the controllers to come up. Yep, looks like they're starting to come up. Cool. While that's happening, we're going to go to, let's go to the AWS downstream. We're going to kind of do the same thing. Yep, success on that one. 
We're going to go to the app catalog, and it's the same kind of install. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Now, I've already got DNS pointed to this host correctly, um, just to give us, uh, to make it a little easier. Again, I'm going to go to the YAML, or under controller, and this time under federation, we needs to be a managed service. We're going to set ingress to true. We're going to call this the host name. What did I set it to? Uh, I think I had it here earlier. Uh, dig oh down one nv down one there we go so i'm going to set it to nv down one <clears throat> i'm going to set it into to ingress right tls ingress i'm going to set it to true <clears throat> and what i need to do whoops, sorry about that what i need to do is go back to my code and this is on the downstream cluster i'm going to go here and again just to kind of show you kubectl get node Notice they've got the EC2, and then on this one, kubectl get node. This is the upstream. I label the mark KE1, 2, and 3 because I'm crazy like that. Okay, so we're talking to the downstream. It's going to create the namespace, the certs, and give it uh, advanced permission. Great, so now we've got the manage service. Now, we'll, we'll be able to tie the two together. It's got to be done with the GUI right now. Um, we do have some tickets open with them to uh, kind of allow the streamlining of configuration. Okay, no CVEs, no scanner, uh, Docker, no global config, global PSPs. We don't need to do that. K3S again, enable to true, spell true right. Under the manager, we're going to set ingress to true. We're going to give it a host name of new vector 2.rfed.io. And I also have that DNS set up. Again, we're going to do TLS ingress, and we're going to set it to true. And then again, for security reasons, cluster IP. We're going to go ahead and hit install. Okay, while that's running, let's go ahead and validate the first one. We can do get pod. We see everything's up and running. I love this. Uh, kubectl get svc. -n. So we're going to just check the services. Um, it didn't create the service again. That's fascinating. It did this earlier. Let me look at my code real quick and whoop, not open it up. Um, is there something I'm forgetting to set? So controller federation master service ingress enabled true. Set controller federation ingress host. Ingress TLS, controller federation ingress secret name. And then that's federation master service type. Did I miss that? Yeah, let's go back here. Okay, that's success on the downstream. We'll go back to the local cluster. We'll go to apps, we're viewing all namespaces. We can go to installed. We can search for new if we want. What we'll do is we'll just go ahead and edit this, hit next and edit the YAML. So that was controller federation master service type. Oh, there. Oh, there it is. Type cluster IP. There we go. I bet you that's what's causing the issue. Go ahead and update that and let that, let that roll through. Cool. Success there. So it's updated the chart and we'll go to our downstream in AWS. We'll kind of do the same. I want to validate that, 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 that I may or be miss may not may or may not be missing the type. I think I am. Okay. So we'll go to workload, oops, sorry, apps installed. All right, look at all, new vector, edit, next, YAML. And this is manage services type, there it is, cluster IP, and then hit update. We're gonna let that run. While that's running, we're gonna come back here and look at the services. Okay, perfect. Now see where you have the fed master running on a cluster IP. And then if we do a kubectl get ingress, we should see that we have the NV API plumbed in. And if we go here, we should be able to get bad gateway. So that must still may be coming up. Um, deployment one out of three. Okay. So that's coming up. And so what that's, this is the downstream kubectl get cattle new vector great so that's there and it actually does run a controller pod to kind of manage that 
So if we wanted to double check, we can go over here to the primary cluster and do the same thing. Okay, so it is rolling one right now. So we'll give that a sec while it's coming back up. Okay, yeah, see how it just kicked off a new one three seconds ago. Okay, perfect. So now we can actually go in the new vector. We'll log in. Yay, admin. Cool, admin, admin. That's their default password. And we can go to new vector two. Uh, new vector two. Oh, let's go to the downstream, make sure I've got that. Uh, KubeCTO, get ingress. Yeah, I've got it there. Let me just make sure it's pointed to the right. DNS, right? Isn't it always DNS's fault? 190. That doesn't look right. Okay, let me update the DNS. Let me pause this real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, look at this guy. I was being silly. Okay, new vector two. Now it's pointed to the red IP. I goofed up. I typed the DNS entry wrong. And Chrome is going to be a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the browsing data real quick. Over the last hour. Because of Chrome. Yeah, there we go. Advanced. Oh, I like it. We have to reauthenticate here and here. Yay. Go back in. Not that uh, we need to get back into Rancher anymore at this point because we've got two new vector systems up and running. Admin, admin, log in. Admin, admin, log in. Okay, so we've got two systems, right? One's the upper, one's the lower. One's the master, one's the managed service. So this is the master one, that's the new vector one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go under, under admin account, go multiple clusters, hit promote. Now this one's going to be, that is the API. And it's not port 11443, it's 443. We're not gonna use a proxy and hit submit. This will actually kick us out. We just have to re-authenticate. Okay, notice it says fed admin. If we go to multiple clusters, notice now we have a primary with the cluster name. Okay, score is fair. See the lock, it says generate token. We're gonna, do is we're gonna copy that token. We're gonna go to the downstream. We're gonna kind of repeat the process, go to multiple clusters and we're gonna join. This time for the token, we're gonna put in that string and notice it already fills in the upstream cluster IP import. This one is going to be that API, so nv down one dot rfed dot io, and we're going to change that port to four four three again, because remember we TLS it, put a cert there, a wildcard, and hit submit. And an oh, okay, so let's change the cluster name down one, submit, cool, and now it's active. So now if we go back, so this is looking at the downstream one and notice it says cluster.local is the primary and this is a managed cluster and it's in a join state. We go back to the primary, we can close this out and refresh and notice we now have the synced downstream, okay? Pretty easy way to do it through the app catalog, built into Rancher, multiple clusters. Uh, actually, let's, let's have some fun. Let's do, let's do a third one real quick. So I'm gonna do my, my DigitalOcean one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the Coop config uh, and then come over here to my third shell and export Coop config. What do I call it? RKE2 cluster DO. Cool. So now I'm talking to that and CTO get node. And this should be like down. Yeah. Our, yep. Notice the IP addresses. Uh, I'll have to pause. Let me pause this real quick and I'll do DNS real quick. I wasn't intending on doing three, but why not? It's fun. Be right back. Okay, back. Okay, DNS is all set up. I just ticked it up so it's down th down two in new vector three. So what we'll do now is we're on the downstream. Oh, we got to do real quick. We've got to do the just add the certs, make it play nice, and do the TLS. So again, we're gonna go. This is on the down. This is on the second downstream, and we're gonna go ahead and create the namespace, add the certs, and just give it the correct labels. And then once we're looking at the downstream, we're gonna go into the apps. In the catalog, go to new vector. I'm gonna hit install. Next, YAML. And again, just to kind of highlight, under controller, we're gonna to go to federated, managed, ingress, true, host, nv down to rfed.io, and I have the DNS pointed up. Secret name is TLS ingress. This is why you get a wildcard cert. That's all I'm saying. Set that to true. 
set the type to cluster IP. Okay, that was my mistake earlier. Trust me, this is like the second time I've shot this video because uh, I kept forgetting that one setting. Uh, nothing here for CVE. In fact, I think this can do it. Yep, poop. Uh, not worried about enforcer. We're not worried about global. K3S does have to be set to true because underneath the hood of our KE2 is K3S. Um, under manager, ingress, true, host name, new vector th three, sorry, three dot rfed.io. Uh, secret name, TLS ingress, wildcard all the things, TLS true. And then again, for security on the service, cluster IP, and then hit install. Okay, while this is installing, what we can do is kubectl get uh, pod n cattle new vector, nothing yet. There you go, now it's creating. Boop, container creating. So I haven't done this on this cluster, so it's going to take a minute to pull in. While that's happening, we can go, we can close out new vector two. And again, we're back on our federation master. We can get that token again. Um, fun fact, it's really just base64 encoded JSON. It's kind of a neat little hack that they're doing. Um, but it also is effectively creating, I wouldn't say trust on first use, but it's um, it's got like the server information, the port, and then a, a, t a token that's, I wouldn't say encrypted, well, it's bundled into the JSON that that's base64 encoded. So it's double wrapped for lack of a better term. And so now we can go to new vector three. And this does take, even though it'll go full pod running, manager, yeah, we'll give it another sec while that's coming up. Uh, copy that. We don't need that anymore. So cool. Uh, go to new vector, just kind of quick while we're waiting for it to come up. Look at the network activity with the cluster. So you can see we've got a lot of stuff going on with the cluster right now, which is kind of cool. And 73 seconds. Again, this is going to take a minute to come up. It's already been a minute. Let's see if we can log in. Why not? It's not going to hurt. Yeah, I didn't think so. It's still coming up. Uh, we can check ingress. Learn to spell. Okay, cool. It's got the NV down too, new vector too. That's what we wanted to see. And then kubectl get svc dash n cattle new vector. And again, we wanted to see that managed port open. Okay. Now again, this is 10.4.3.3 on internal. The other thing you could do potentially is do node ports and not worry about ingress and TLS, but that gets a little, you're adding more ports um, which, add, which in theory increase the surface area, which I'm not exactly a fan of um, from a security standpoint of view. So I like the idea of running through ingress. Great. We're all running, running, running. Come back here. Refresh. Cool. We're getting to the front door. Admin, admin. Yes, I agree. Great. So we're now in the downstream. We go to multiple clusters. Again, join. We still have the token. Again, that's still there. So it's down one, but this one's actually down two. And we're going to change the name to down two. And we're going to change that port because we're coming in through ingress and hit submit. Cool. Now it's joined the cluster successfully. So notice it doesn't know about its upstreams. It just knows it's connected to a primary. We go back up here to the upstream. We go back to fed admin, multiple clusters, and refresh. And you can now see that we've got our two downstream clusters. The other thing we can take a look at is the federated policy, and this is where we can go and administrate the policies downstream. Okay. Hope this is informative. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, and again, this was kind of fun to kind of work through this. I haven't actually worked through this completely. I have, I have it all done in uh, Helm YAML uh, kind of command line stuff just because that's where I tend to live nowadays. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. Cool. Thanks for watching.